everybody, welcome back. We are on Unit 3, Production Cost and the Perfect Competition Model. In this video, we are focused on the long run production cost. Now, first thing I need to do is define the long run. In microeconomics, the long run is defined as when all of your inputs to production are variable. Everything is variable. There is no fixed cost. What's the short run? The short run is when there are fixed costs, when at least one input to the production process is fixed. But in this situation, the long run production cost Talking about the long run, guys, that means everything is variable, including the facility you actually produce things in. Everything's variable. The plant size is variable. And so with that, we're going to talk about things like economies of scale and diseconomies of scale. Now remember, that word scale, what does it mean? It means size. Okay, so when we start talking about economies of size, we're talking about what happens when we increase our production capabilities by changing even the size of the plant itself. When I say plant, I'm talking the manufacturing facility. In the short run, of course, the actual facility that we are in, it is staying constant. It can't get any bigger because that is a fixed cost in the short run. So again, in this one, we're talking about, hey, how about if we increase the scale, the size and scope of our production, make our plants incredibly big, try to get as much specialization as we can, buy in bulk, things like that. What is our average cost going to look like? And we get this type of shape, which we are used to, okay? Um, and what this is saying is during this point in time, we're having economies of stick scale. This is constant returns to scale, and this is diseconomies of scale. But I want to look at this a little bit closer, guys, because the big key is what we should kind of be thinking about is as we're moving this direction on this curve, the size of the facility that we are producing in and everything else is variable and i.e. it's getting bigger, right? The scope and size of our production is getting bigger as we're moving that direction. And here's the thing, guys. This is the real interesting part about the long run average cost curve is it is composed of tangency points related to the short run average total cost curve. So I'm going to put in our short run average total cost curve. Here they are. They have tangency points. Okay, I kind of missed it, but that's okay. I can just make my dot bigger. Little tangency point, tangency point, uh, tangency point. Keep going. Sorry for the dead air here, but I want to get this kind of filled up so you can kind of see it. All right, of course, I didn't draw that really well, but what are all of those red lines? Those red lines, guys, are short run average total cost curve. I want you to know, guys, in a lot of the videos when we're talking about production costs, we're always assuming that we are producing in the short run, okay? So I don't always put an SR in front of it. You're used to just seeing average total cost, okay? Now, key also point, when you do the long run average cost curve, you don't need to say long run average total cost. Why is that? Well, guys, the reason you need total cost is, guys, we have fixed cost and we have variable cost, so you need to communicate, hey, we're adding all of that in when we have our average total cost curve. But again, there's no fixed cost. There's only one type of cost. It's all variables. So you don't need the T because you don't have two different types of cost. Again, you only have one variable cost. But here's the thing, guys. You see all those SRATCs? There's actually a ton of them. There's like, I can create more and more and more. But what the idea is, guys, that as our plant and our facility gets bigger, look what's happening to that SRATC curve. It's moving to the right, okay? So anytime that we're actually doing analysis in this class and we're doing short run analysis, it's like we're at a snapshot, right? We got, oh, that's where we're at. Our plant size is a certain size, and so that's the curve we're with, right? We have right now. Or maybe that's the curve. Okay, so that's what we're doing oftentimes. In this video, with this concept, the long run production cost, we're looking big picture. We're not just looking at the present, we're looking at what could happen even in the future, okay? With as we increase this plant size. Notice, guys, again, we can get economies of scale, okay? Economies of size. So here's my economies of scale right there. That's when the long run average cost is going down. Now, there will be some point we can't drive down our cost no matter how big our plant is anymore, our average cost anymore, and we'll have our constant, okay, returns 
Now, I still like to say of scale. AP says to scale, but I like of scale. Okay? I like to really differentiate when I'm saying of, I'm saying of size, okay? And to scale, to me, oftentimes I want to think of that as in being to a particular size. So I like to use the word of, okay? AP is not astringent about that. But anyhow, constant returns of scale, to scale, it's said either way. And then diseconomies, okay? Diseconomies of scale. So you might have a little bit of questions about this one. What's going on here? Well, guys, plant size can get too big, right? We don't want a manufacturing plant the size of Wyoming. At some point, bureaucratic cost and management costs just get too big. It's too hard to manage. Your scale is too big, so you actually start getting diseconomies of scale. Okay, so I'm hoping that you're seeing all the big points that we want to get. I want to go one other place in this video, guys. Here's the thing, development economics. When we start talking about development economics, we're talking about countries who are trying to develop. And it really starts talking about protectionism. In general, economists do like trade, but they really like free trade between similarly developed countries. They do get it, but there is some disagreement between economists, and there's many economists who believe that when you're, you have a much less developed country and a much more developed country, then maybe there is actually a role for some protectionism, some barriers to trade, especially from the developing country who's trying to move up kind of from a primary sector production into secondary and tertiary, more value-added production. And this kind of has this argument in it, okay? Put it this way, what I'm saying is, let's say you want to enter into the automobile manufacturing facility, uh, um, um, industry, sorry, making automobiles, um, but you are a country that hasn't done that before. Well, now you're going to have to go compete against the Toyotas, the Hondas, the GMs, the Fords of the world, who are way over here in their production process, which means their average costs are really low. When you open up, heck, when you first open up, your SRAS might be hit right there, right? So there's your SRA, I'm sorry, TS, SRATS. And so there might be a role for some protectionism here, some tariffs. You might throw up some tariffs, protect for a while, because you can't compete while you get the economies of scale. Well, you can get while you can get your size of your plant bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, maybe when you get down here, you start trying to get rid of the tariffs, maybe you keep some production subsidies in place, and then finally, when you get over there, that's when you should open up the free trade and compete uh, kind of without any supports at that point. But I just think it's a really nice application to think about it from a development, uh, development economic standpoint, this LRAS versus the SRATC. Anyhow, hope you caught all those points. We'll see you in the next video.